Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to be doing a loadout video for this upcoming Milsim West event that I got coming up this next weekend. It's gonna be at a more kind of urban AO, but more specifically, it's gonna be at Guardian Center. So Guardian Center is pretty much the premier um, urban training facility here on the East Coast, uh, maybe in the United States. I've been there a total of three times, once being in the military when I was in Ranger Battalion, and then the other two times was you know, at Airsoft Games, with this being my fourth time at this place, and it's awesome. Every time I've gone there, it's complete pandemonium. You know, you're know, you raiding uh, multi-story buildings just nonstop, uh, you know, going into tunnels and stuff like that. People are just dying all around you, which is pretty uh, typical for actual CQB. Yeah. Because of this chaos, um, it kind of shifts my loadout a little bit, maybe a little bit different than the last uh, loadout video I've done where it's kind of geared towards a more uh, wooded kind of open AO where you're going up hills and, and bushes and stuff like that more kind of like recce focused loadout uh, this loadout's going to be more directed towards direct action um, kind of stuff aka body armor the reason you want to wear body armor at these airsoft events, or at least for Milsom West, is because Milsom West tries to make it, you know, as realistic as possible. Because if you were going to be actually conducting house-to-house -house raids in real life, you'd probably want to wear a plate carrier because somebody's going to get shot. And at Milsom West, they have the two tourniquet rules. So if you're wearing a plate carrier with actual rifle plates in it and a ballistic helmet, you get access to two Milsom West tourniquets. Uh, these are not real tourniquets these are produced by I believe Tac Taylor uh, for the event uh, for you to use so if you're not wearing body armor you only get one of these things so if you're shot uh, by a BB you lay on the ground you scream for help and one of your buddies can run up to you grab your tourniquet off of you put it on your limb or whatever and you're back in the game after you're shot for that you have to go and consume a water bottle and bleed out and stuff like that but if you're wearing a plate carrier and a helmet you get two of them so it's essentially kind of like an extra life and it kind of incentivizes for you to wear body armor and you know at these more urban aos a lot of people do wear body armor oh do you have another one i think everybody's disappeared you're a chad oh, here's one my last one two yeah, yeah. you have a Good. three okay some of us Fuck. some of us were in there <laughs> that was brutal Holy shit, that, that, that was the most grenades I've ever uh, seen toss in one fight. That block left tackle right did not work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do believe that Milsim West and events like it are great ways for you to get out there in your kit and see how it's like to you know, use it in the field. And for an event where you're gonna wear body armor, you really have to take into account um, how are you gonna carry your sustainment on you, you know, if you're wearing a plate carrier and I see a lot of guys that kind of set up their plate carriers in certain ways, especially on Instagram. And I always think to myself that if you were actually to go out there and do this stuff, you'd probably need a way to carry a, you know, a rucksack or an assault pack on you. But before we get into the entirety of my kit for this event, a word from our sponsors. Today's video is sponsored by Gunspot. Gunspot is an online listing and auction site for firearms, firearms accessories, ammunition, all that great stuff with no out-of-state sales taxes or any hidden fees, which I think is pretty cool. So go check out Gunspot and big thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. This video is also sponsored by PowerTac Lights. Great lights at a great price. And if you use code BLUEJEAN at checkout, it gets you 15% off your entire order. Also make sure to check out Slate Black Industries. Use code BJO10 for 10% off some sick M-Lock grips and accessories. So the plate carrier I'm gonna be using at this event was gonna be the Wartech TV-110. So this is a Russian-made plate carrier. I have an entire video uh, reviewing this thing. It's essentially kind of like a JPC, but more geared towards AKs because I have found that the kangaroo pouch on the TV-110 uh, fits AK mags a little bit better than the kangaroo pouch on the JPC, which, you know, makes sense because it's made in Russia and they'd be using AKs over there. <laughs> if you look at the setup on it, it's very similar to how it's actually set up in Tarkov. This is actually one of the play carriers in that game. 
and that's what I based that video off of in the review because I was kind of setting it up the way it's run by the PMC in the game. But it actually, the way it's set up in game is not that bad, and I kind of just stuck to it. Um, you can see on here, I'm running five mags, three in the kangaroo pouch and two in these um, external pouches right here. These are from ANA Tactical, I believe. And right here, I got a multi-tool. I'm still uh, deciding maybe I might put another frag pouch right there because we're going to be using grenades at this AO. Uh, one thing I love about Guardian Center is you're allowed to use pyro there. Um, when it comes to CQB and airsoft, um, sometimes it kind of gets on my nerves a little bit because you'll be <laughs> doing things that you would never do in real life. Like if I knew there was a guy inside of a house um, that had like a PKM fixed on a stairwell, I'm not going to send my squad in there to try to clear him out. Uh, you might do that in airsoft. Um, if this was real life, you would just level that entire building. Um, pyro gets us a step closer to that, uh, grenades and especially the launchable ones which are allowed at this event uh, versus some other AOs I've been to where it's just like straight BB wars inside of a house. On the left here, you can see that I'm running my radio. I do like this radio pouch, makes it very um, easy to access it. Sometimes I just run the radio inside the M4 mag pouch, especially these bow fangs, they fit in there perfectly fine. And kind of the only thing I really changed from on this rig versus the last time you've probably seen it in a video is this large uh, general purpose pouch I have on the side. I think this is from TAG. Uh, it's just an old pouch I had from when I was in Ranger Battalion. And I like this thing because I can just store my Nalgene bottle in there or a water bottle versus running stuff on my back, you know, because I used to be kind of those guys that would rock the camelback all the time on the back of the plate, uh, plate carrier. And that worked with me for me when I was in the military, you know, when we were doing direct action raids, uh, flying in that night, hitting the house and then flying out really didn't have to like worry about a ton of sustainment. So, you know, it really took me a long time to break out of that mindset of running stuff on my back. But as you can see here on the back of the plate carrier, I have it completely slick. So the reason for this is so I can run, you know, my rucksack when I go out there or an assault pack with it. I don't really need um, a large hydration carrier on the back of here. If I wanted more water, I'm just running in the assault pack, which can carry other stuff like more grenades and things like that. So that is the key that I've seen at these events is just keep your you know, back of your plate carrier slick. Uh, you don't need anything back there. You're gonna be out there for multiple days, so you're gonna need a way to carry something on you. All right, moving towards the belt line here. Uh, you've seen it before, I've done a video on it. This is the Segura Gear Battle Wagon. Uh, the Really, the only thing I've changed on this is I did away with my kind of uh, speed reload mag pouch. Usually I have a G-code um, Scorpion pouch right here, but instead I'm opting for uh, grenade pouches because I find that just an easy way to access grenades. I might actually put more on. Um, we have a lot of pyro for this event. It's going to be a pretty brutal AO, with a lot of grenades being thrown. So I'm kind of going grenade heavy and opted out of the spare mag. And plus I have a ton of ammo on my plate carrier. So it's not a huge deal, especially for the ammo allowances at Milson West. Like this amount of mags will do you just fine. Moving over here, I have this large dump pouch. This was sent to me from Gray Shop, I believe. This is from Mortar Attack. It's a Russian made uh, dump pouch. Mortar Attack is kind of like a mixed reputation on quality. Uh, from what I've seen on their stuff lately, uh, seems to be pretty good. And this dump pouch is honestly pretty awesome. Um, what I like about it, it's got a kind of a, a wide, uh, mouth on it <laughs> for you to easily uh kind of throw mags in there or whatever else maybe if we go on a raid and we steal a bunch of bbs and water bottles and stuff like that at a patrol base dump pouches are a great way to carry that stuff um you know on a fly it's essentially just a big rollable like sse pouch so what is kind of atypical for me at milsom west is i'm actually gonna be running a pistol for this this is my uh umarex glock 17 um Honestly, this is probably my least used airsoft gun. I pretty much only need to use my rifle, but you know, um, it's a kind of a CQB focused AO and I'm gonna run it since I'm running a gun belt anyway. Um, this thing is actually pretty cool. It actually shoots pretty far for an airsoft gun, especially for a pistol. And I got my real X300 on there. 
um, you know, because there's some dark areas. And honestly, for Guardian Center, I'm not sure how dark it is going to be for you know this event. Typically, it's pretty well lit at night, so it's going to be pretty cool testing. You know, like switching from night vision to white light, which is I think very. Um, pertinent to this event, you know, specifically at more urban areas. All right, so moving over to the, the airsoft gun that I'm gonna be using. So <sighs> airsoft guns are kind of like disposable items to me at this point. Don't worry, the RPK is still fine. Um, it's being used by my buddy Kenny for this event because the fine folks over at Arcturus sent me this thing and I told them I'd use it. So um, this thing is actually pretty cool. This is their AK-12 and it comes pre-upgraded. So it has a MOSFET trigger in it and it's got a bunch of different firing options. Typically when I'm running like a rifle like this, I rarely go full auto because I'm really worried about like ammo consumption versus when I'm using the RPK, I'm going complete full auto. So it's gonna be kind of a hard shift um, going back to being a rifleman. But you know, they assured me that this thing is you know, gonna last and I won't break it, we'll see. And you know, how well a um, you know pre-upgraded gun works. So looking forward to using this thing. So as far as the attachments go, I got running on this rifle. I got the Holosun Ames, no surprise here. You guys know that I simp for the Ames. It's the Chinese mailbox of death. I just love this thing, um, especially on AKs. It puts that sight in that really good position to passive aim from behind your night vision and it's a really clear reticle under nods it gets really dim and it's awesome you can see everything even without having to blast out your illuminator at the front here i have the surefire vampire light um, this is pretty much the main light that i run on my rifles these days um, because i love its ability to go between an illuminator and white light uh, and especially at this AO, we're going to be going from, you know, artificial light to complete darkness and maybe, you know, a few seconds. Being able to switch between the two on the fly is a big plus for me. Moving on to the ruck that I'm using for this event. So I usually use my Alice pack, but when it comes to these more urban AOs, I found that this uh, Crossfire DG3 um, works out pretty good. It runs really well on top of body armor. I found the Alice pack does as well, but I found that this was a little bit more comfortable and it holds everything I need. Not as spacious and it's a little bit more minimalistic than you know what I was carrying in my Alice pack, but it gets the job done. I'm going to strap a sleep pad on the side of here because even if it's like inside a house, I don't want to be sleeping on hard concrete. I'm going to bring a sleep pad out there. It's always a good idea to bring a sleep pad, even if you don't see it on mine currently. Uh, the only thing I've done uh, when it comes to wearing it on top of body armor is I removed the waist pad on it down here. Uh, it just sits more flat, that waist pad. Uh, that's kind of like my, my main complaint about this rock. It feels like it runs pretty high on your back. So especially when if you're running a plate carrier, it feels pretty wonky so um you know especially for the movements are not super long and you're running wearing this thing uh just remove the waist pad it's totally fine and it sits perfectly flat on the back of your play carrier that's about it guys that is my loadout for this next milsim west um kind of geared to more towards direct action and you know surviving in an urban environment but hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please consider dropping a like and subscribing you can also follow me on instagram at blue jean operator or go to my website thebluejeanoperator.com to find some cool shirts and merch which helps support the channel also make sure to hit that notification bell just so you can keep up to date whenever i decide to post a new video but that's all i got for you guys and i'll see you guys next time